sometimes I think women get the bad rap for gossiping. I don't think it's gender specific, to be honest. I think Agreed. everybody yeah, does that. Agreed. Well, and anytime you see some of that kind of more toxic behavior going on, the way that you can also look at it is to recognize is if someone's gossiping or doing something that's toxic in the workplace, if you actually can start by having compassion for them, because what that tells you is that that person's got some pain and the pain is leaking out into the behavior. And that actually though, if we look underneath it all, that behavior actually has a good intention, which is that the person wants to feel better. And they don't yet know how to really feel better in a way that deeply connects them to women. And that somehow got severed or disrupted. But what we believe and what I think someone can do is start by believing that people's true nature, who they really are and who women really are, is they actually want to be deeply connected, they want to feel like they belong and that they're valued and that others are and they want to collaborate. And then we could ask the question, okay, so what is your contribution? Are you actually be part of the solution or the problem? <laughs> And then, and then things go uh, open up and you have to work on that on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis or regularly. The other thing that I would say is that this realm of talking about each other is not relegated to women. Um, it exists in every organization. And so we're, when we're working with a team, we'll talk to them about this idea of triangulation. Like Joe's talking to Betty about a problem he's having with Dave. If Joe's having a problem with Dave, go talk to Dave. That's the way you resolve the problem. Right. You don't resolve it by getting five people to line up with you and say, yeah, you're right, this is really terrible. That doesn't resolve anything. It just means everybody's like at each other. First of all, you need to have a dialogue about what's the intention. Everyone has to be on board on the intention. Like what would, will be this conversation about? And we all start with kind of a, a work form, uh, a question um, that that you can open up as a human being again. And then of course, from there, from that connection, like, oh, um, actually this person has a disabled child at, at, at home. I never knew that she had to go uh, uh, early because of that. There is this knowledge. Uh, and then from there, there, there a trust is building or the willingness to open up and see this person in a different way. I work with a group of women. They all work together. It's all women. And so they fall into that trap of talking about each other quite often. So what we have worked on there are a couple of things. First, you have to shift your focus from what you don't want to what you want. You have to mm. actually articulate it. So instead of saying, I don't want people to talk about me, I don't want gossip, you have to say, what do you want? I want a culture of direct communication, trust, openness. And then the second thing I've given them is that they need a graceful exit. So once you know what you want, once you get into that conversation, like you're having a drink after work and someone starts to gossip to you about someone else, instead of doing like a whole lecture on the danger of that, just know like, okay, I'm not gonna engage in this. So what's my graceful exit? What are you gonna change the topic to? Is it going to be, oh, that's really interesting. I hear this. What are you having for lunch tomorrow? Or here's a movie that I saw. Or, you know, what I really appreciate about that person so that you know how you're gonna course correct so that it goes in the direction that you want it to go. Right. You know, I think there's a very simple thing and I hear all of us do that when somebody actually is complaining about something, whether it's a person or a thing or a situation. Someone usually responds with, or. <laughs> <laughs>